Hi everyone, Yas Aske Kalosir Tate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making the most delicious tahini brownies. These are going to be rich, moist, fudgy, just so good. Everything you want in a brownie. They taste even better the next day when they, stay, when they get nice and cold. They taste like just rich bites of fudge. So good and healthy because they have tahini in them. I'm going to show you how to make the vegan version as well. The whole recipe is pretty much vegan except I am using two eggs in this, in this um, recipe, but I'm going to tell you about the substitute that I've used that works while we're making it. Make a hot cup of coffee or pour some milk for the kids. Get a batch of these going in the oven because you're going to love them. Let's get started. All right, so I'm starting with a double boiler. I just have a couple of inches of water steaming in a pot. You can also melt the chocolate in the microwave if you prefer. So over here I have about five ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips. This is all I had. It was hard to find the baking chocolate bars, but um, if you have chocolate chips, you can use them. Just know that they do melt a little bit thicker than baking bars. And then I have a two ounce bar of dark chocolate. You can make this with all dark chocolate. Sometimes it's called bittersweet chocolate, all semi-sweet chocolate. It just depends how sweet you want it. Bittersweet is less sweet, obviously. So you need seven ounces of chocolate. That goes in there. Now, if you want to use butter instead of olive oil, it's going to have more flavor and less of the, you know, the heaviness that olive oil has, but I'm going to use olive oil just to keep them, you know, vegan, basically. So four tablespoons. If you're using butter, you're going to need about four ounces, which is a stick. And you keep this over the heat, or this, the water that's steaming. You don't want it to be boiling, otherwise it's going to um, burn the chocolate and you just keep mixing it until the chocolate is completely melted. So while the chocolate is melting, we're gonna get the rest of the ingredients together. I have a cup of granulated sugar in here, and I am adding two eggs. You don't have to add the eggs. I made this yesterday using the flax egg substitute that I used in my walnut cake, and it worked perfectly. I do like the way the eggs work a little bit better, so it's up to you. Um, we are not vegan, so I don't mind adding the eggs, but if you're fasting for Lent or you keep, you know, things vegan, then just use the eggs instead of the flax eggs. And the flax eggs measurement is going to be on the blog post. So before I use the whisk to whisk this up, I have the dry ingredients here, which are two thirds of a cup of all purpose flour. That is 90 grams, three heaping tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder, which is 20 grams. I have a quarter teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of baking powder. If you're not using the eggs, then go ahead and use a whole teaspoon of baking powder. It's gonna help it rise a little bit better. Just whisk everything all together. And that's it, the dry ingredients are ready. This it just comes together so quickly. You're just gonna need a few bowls, that's the only thing. Whisk the eggs together with the sugar. And I'm also gonna add three teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. Tahini is a strong flavor, and to balance it out and just make it nice, just more delicious, I like lots of vanilla. So three teaspoons of vanilla. And you're just gonna whisk this together until it's nice and thick. If you're using the flax eggs, you don't even have to do this step. You put all of the wet ingredients together and then you whisk them up until everything is smooth. But beating the eggs a little bit more helps uh, the batter rise a little bit more and get a little bit of that crackle that everybody loves whenever they bake a brownie. And do not forget to whisk the chocolate. Okay, that's good enough. The more you whisk eggs, the paler and thicker they become, and you can take it a little bit thicker than this, especially if you're using a hand mixer, that's gonna be much easier. If you're melting the chocolate using the microwave, you wanna do it in about 20 second increments because the microwave is very strong, and if it burns the chocolate, you're gonna to have to throw it out and start all over. That's why I really like using the double boiler method. You're standing here, you're watching it, and it just won't burn. Once you have just a few chunks of chocolate left, you can take it off of the heat because the residual heat of the chocolate will continue to melt those last few bits. So now, now it's time, once the chocolate is melted, now it's time to add the tahini to it. I love Soom tahini. This is one of my favorite brands of tahini, the Soom. Second favorite is Whole Foods 365 brand. They're both really high quality tahini. You never get that bitter, burnt flavor that sometimes tahini brands tend to have. This is definitely not sponsored, but if they wanna sponsor me, <laughs> I'm open to it. 
but this is just a brand that I like and I like sharing with you the brands that I like so that way you don't end up getting a brand that's not that great and then what happens is um, your whole recipe is messed up. So we need three quarters of a cup of tahini and that is 170 grams. If you're not a fan of tahini, um, there are people out there that don't like sesame flavor. You can use peanut butter in this, cashew butter, really any nut butter would work, but I love the tahini flavor in this, so give it a try. You might end up liking it when it's mixed with chocolate. Whisk it all together, and then just set it aside for a few minutes for it to cool a little bit, and let's get the rest of the ingredients in the mixture. So we are going to need a cup of orange juice. Orange and sesame go well together. Orange goes well with chocolate too. One cup, there's a little bit more, I'm just gonna put it in there. So the recipe calls for one teaspoon of cinnamon, but I love cinnamon, so I'm gonna go ahead and put two. It's up to you how much you wanna put in there. One is basic, two is if you wanna kick it up a little bit. Okay, so the chocolate has not cooled down enough yet because I'm doing the video and I'm trying to do things at the same time. If I wasn't doing a video and I was at home making this just as a normal person, <laughs> like I did when I was testing, I would melt the chocolate first so it can have a chance to cool and then add it to the egg mixture. But since I didn't do that, I'm just gonna temper it a little bit. I'm gonna temper the egg mixture a little bit with the hot chocolate and I'm just gonna add it a little bit at a time so that way the eggs don't scramble. But if you have time to let it cool a little bit, let it cool. Ah, oh, chocolate smells so good. And now we're gonna add the dry ingredients, the flour, just whisk them in. It's a thin batter and that's what's gonna make it so nice and fudgy, don't be afraid of it. If you wanna double this batter, then you're gonna have enough to uh, fill a nine by 13 inch baking pan. Right now we're using an eight inch square baking pan, which I'm gonna get ready. So an eight inch square baking pan, I have a sheet of parchment paper. I baked some cookies on this and I'm reusing it. I don't like to waste, so I save parchment paper, you guys. I <laughs> think you should too. Okay, before I put it in here, I'm just gonna spray it with a little bit of pan spray. You can brush it with some oil if you prefer. Now I use olive oil. It's a more of a refined olive oil. A pure cold pressed olive oil would be very heavy for this recipe, so I don't recommend it. You can use coconut oil. It will leave a little bit of a coconut flavor, so it's, you know, it's up to you. Or your favorite vegetable oil. I know some people have strong feelings about using vegetable oil. I'm one of them. I'm not really a really big fan, but I will leave it up to you. Pour all of the batter into the pan. And then for a little added richness, if you have chocolate chunks or chocolate chips, you can just sprinkle them on top. If you're using coconut oil because you like the flavor, you could even put some shredded coconut on top of this, leaving it up to you once again, but I like, this is my favorite combination. It's ready for the oven. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This is gonna bake on the center rack for about 35 to 40 minutes. It is still going to be pretty wet in the center. It's not gonna be completely cooked through. I mean, it is gonna be cooked through, but it is gonna be moist in the center, and that is how I like it. The thing about that is, once it comes out, it's gonna take a couple of hours before it's ready. First, it needs to come to room temperature. Then you need to either put it in the freezer for an hour or so, or keep it refrigerated for a few hours until it completely sets, because if you were to go and cut into it, it'll be more like a molten lava cake, and it's gonna be hard to serve like that. I don't recommend it, unless you're making it in little ramekins and you're gonna scoop some ice cream on top of that, which is not a bad idea. That's pretty delicious sounding. But anyway, about 35 to 40 minutes, max 45 minutes, if your oven cooks on the slower side, but you do want the corners to be cooked and kind of puffy, but the center is gonna be gooey and moist and fudgy and delicious. I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it comes out. Okay, so the brownies are ready. Now, they do need, the hardest part of making this recipe is waiting because, because they are so fudgy and moist and just gooey in the center, the setting time is really the longest time, and I recommend that you let these set in the refrigerator for like three or four hours once they're completely cooled. I actually prefer that you do this overnight. 
let them sit in there. Once they're completely cooled, wrap them with some plastic wrap so that way they don't absorb any smells from the refrigerator. You could even freeze them and then let them sit in the refrigerator or the freezer until they cool completely and they're perfectly set. I didn't do that, so I have a feeling I'm gonna regret cutting into them, but I do have another batch that I made yesterday using the flax egg substitute, which was four tablespoons of ground flax seeds with a half a cup of water, but the measurements are always on the blog, so you guys don't worry. But anyway, so I did test that because I wanted to make sure that it worked. The difference in taste is basically using the flax eggs, it is a little bit more earthy. That's the thing. Otherwise, you can barely taste it. It naturally tastes a little bit more earthy because the tahini is in there and the olive oil. It's going to be delicious. So if you want to swap out the flax eggs for pumpkin puree, that would work too. It'll make it extra moist, but it does make them a little more dense. So it's up to you. And it makes it a little bit, I hate to say gluey, but basically it's more of that type of a consistency, if that makes any sense. But that will all be on the blog post. Let's cut into these. <laughs> Fingers crossed and hope that the whole thing doesn't fall apart because I do need to take pictures for the vlog. Okay, I know that the center is very, very fudgy still and it's not, it hasn't set, so I'm just gonna be very careful. But do you see how the, the top part starts to break off just like a regular brownie does? You know it's gonna be good. Oh, not too bad. Look at how moist they are in the center. See that? Oh my goodness. Delicious. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside and I will show you what the other ones look like that my kids have already dug into. Can you see? <laughs> They've taken spoonfuls out of this. But this is what the one with the flax, seed, uh, flax seeds look like. Very fudgy, it's been out too, so that does make a difference. Very fudgy, the, the corners still did rise because we put extra baking, so baking powder, not soda. I put a teaspoon of baking powder in the one without the eggs using the flax seeds and half a teaspoon uh, in the other one when I use the eggs. But I just wanna show you, see how gooey the center is? I love that, and when it's cold, it holds together. It's like you're eating bites of fudge. So I'm gonna put this one aside, now that you know what that looks like, so you know you can make these 100% vegan. And I'm gonna put this on a plate and take a bite. Mmm. Amazing. It's so chocolatey. I can taste the tahini in there, but it's in the background. It's not like bam in your face. Like tahini is a very strong flavor. It's toasted sesame seeds, if you're wondering, that are ground up into like a butter, like a peanut butter type thing. It's used in hummus and all that type of delicious stuff. It is so good in here. I hope you guys give it a try. The orange in the background just really enhances the flavor. I love the chocolate chunks on top, but my favorite thing about this brownie is the consistency. It is so fudgy and delicious and rich. You guys are gonna absolutely love it. Let me know how you're making it in the comment section down below. If you wanna learn how to make my regular brownies, click over here and I will see you right over there. Yes, us.